Well, hello, that's me again. Today is uh, June 21st. It is Friday. Thank God it's Friday and happy Friday to everybody. And where do we even start? And uh, <laughs> uh, some people actually write to me that, oh, please do the, you know, uh, your programs or shows, they call it. It's not a show, really. The fact that I'm being sometimes facetious and even humorous. I, I don't know what humor is. Uh, so uh, they think that it's show. It's not show. It's just, you know, I'm just explaining things the way I can. And they say, oh, please do them, you know, every day. I cannot do that. It's the issue of the, it's a monetary issue. And it is the issue, of course, me having other business, so to speak, to attend to. But, but I understand uh, sometimes it warrants even to make things within one day or, you know, a uh, few times. Forget about making them every day. So, and, but I'll try to, I try to do my best. And let's start with discussing with the, obviously, what happened. And you can go and watch me uh, uh, with, obviously, our wonderful uh, host, uh, Garland Nixon, and friend, you know, and Scott Ritter yesterday. We've been talking about this whole situation with NATO and of course the fact that Vladimir Putin visited uh, Southeast Asia very successfully to put it mildly you know, obviously everybody talks about the Russia and uh, North Korea what amounts to strategic partnership and to a degree an alliance and but obviously it's a breakthrough in all kinds of sanctions on North Korea and as some people actually uh, in my blog even in the discussion board noticed that uh, it was uh, the communication especially on part of Kim as the man who understands that his nation is factory has been saved now the people will live better and we discussed it also yesterday with Garland Scott and me so, but of course, uh, everything about the situation with uh, arming uh, North Korea is uh, basically Putin stated pretty much very straightforward. And we discussed it yesterday with uh, Garland and uh, Scott. But I want to stress that um, range is everything in uh, modern geopolitics, obviously range and targeting. What does it mean for uh, North Korea to be armed, as Mr. Putin stated, that we would, but I'm pretty sure it's already been done, and what does it mean, what does North Korea do in terms of a weapon, of new weapon system capabilities? Well, for starters, as you can see yourself, this is the range of what most likely Russia will provide, if not already, such things as the Iskander, its cruise missile version, uh, uh, North Korea has its own uh, uh, medium-range uh, medium uh, ballistic missiles, but uh, it's a two and a half thousand kilometers. It's when you have the uh, uh, this Iskander, uh, Iskander uh, complex, which has two uh, vertical uh, launch uh, containers. So that's not some kind of air defense system. It's basically development of the traditional bastion, uh, uh, pardon me, uh, Iskander launch system with cruise missiles. So they, as you can see yourself, suddenly uh, uh, North Korea has not only ability to cover all of it, obviously they had this before, but what they will have, obviously they will have a very good targeting and a very good accurate, you know, recon on issues with, you know, which they can launch anywhere. Of course, we discussed it also yesterday and Scott thinks, which I think so, he's correct, that uh, uh, what they needed from Russia also is the uh, intercontinental ballistic missile capability in terms of accuracy, you know, the CEP, you know, circular error probable, and the uh, development of the uh, uh, multiple independent re-entry vehicles, because they obviously have the uh, ballistic missile, which looks suspiciously like topol, but it doesn't mean that Russians can uh, transfer those topol, uh, you know, uh, missiles or technology, but, uh, you know, North Koreans could have developed it themselves, but they obviously need a modern, you know, so to speak, so-called bus, which, did, you, you know, the, uh, brings those MIRVs, uh, multiple independent re-entry vehicles, uh, in the trajectory and then releases them. But most likely, because they already have been noted of doing this, uh, they are interested in the further development of their uh, hypersonic gliding body.
And as you understand, uh, United States has no means to intercept it. And so that's probably what Russia will help North Korea with. And of course, we can uh, talk about all kinds of the, uh, you know, economic benefits primarily for uh, North Koreans who already, you know, many of them work in Russia. They are done officially through the state channels. And, you know, North Korea kind of, you know, sends people and they work on all kinds of, the uh, you know, capacities ranging from farms to uh, plant, you know, industrial plant. So and for Russian farmers. East, it becomes an extremely important uh, development. So it's all mutually beneficial. And of course comes Vietnam. And everybody understands what Vietnam is for Russians and uh, Russia is for Vietnamese. It was Soviet Union which stood by Vietnam in the most trial period of it of the Vietnam War. And three plus million of Vietnamese people have been killed in that war by the United States, no less. So, and it, obviously we're going to be talking probably about the uh, restoration of the Kamran Bay. Obviously Russia is going to develop the nuclear uh, technology center in Vietnam and all kinds of other things. And again, make no mistake, there are a bunch of Vietnamese who are and well sadly ranging from the somewhat what would look like a sweatshops in Russia uh, and they being actually illegal and Russian police tries to deal with this as much as it can but there are many Vietnamese who still study in Russia and many of them speak Russians so Russian so it's a, it's a historic tie and it's a very close one so suddenly apart from Kamran Bay and Naval Base we look at the whole spectrum of the cooperation so that creates of course a bunch of the hysteria as you might understand and uh, what you know what this is what uh, I have to kind of explain to you in the most simple words because you people say well if you say uh, that uh, Western media are primarily trash which they are but why use them well that's precisely the point that even when this uh, exceptional is garbage comes up you know in the media and then suddenly they change the tune that means something it means Bloomberg for example is one of those American exceptionalism you know uh, lying uh, uh, well sack of excrement actually and but here they are yesterday and guess what obviously they are BS as always because this is not a, a really proper way to frame it but even they have to say that US exceptionalism is dead no matter who wins the election Absolutely, I agree with this uh, uh, headline on their part. And yeah, no matter the president, the US will no longer meet the word, world as moral beacon or crusader, but as just another great power pursuing selfish interest. Well, Andreas Kluz, I don't know what um, stone he was sleeping, but I would say that United States lost uh, its moral beacon, so to speak, after 9-11. That was over for the United States. And from the moment there's what, what they were called this Iraqi freedom really operation commenced it was over for the United States and the United States can thank as I already stated its IPAC and Zionist you know uh, leaders who at that time were omnipresent neocons all over the place in W uh, Dubia uh, administration so there you go yeah there, there is no moral beacon what what a lot of crap I mean but it's not only moral issue United States is falling behind in technology and in arms range. It's not only dramatically, the gap, gap is growing. And that brings us to what Mr. Putin was talking about, uh, um, you know, uh, the nuclear triad. And uh, many people, uh, I know, I, if you go to my blog and read what I wrote about this, especially about those people from Russia who wanted to lower the threshold, nuclear threshold, Vladimir Putin came out yesterday and in, you know, without mincing any words said that Russia doesn't need any updates in nuclear doctrine in terms of the, you know, lowering threshold of anything because, of course, Russia will be able to annihilate anybody, including United States, no matter if United United States tries to do the preventive strike because you know what is called head-on head response strike will be initiated immediately. Russia has 
all means of tracking what United States tries to do with its strategic nuclear weapons. So he says that the only thing which will be as, you know what, I predicted it four days ago, that that's what it is. Russia will upgrade its nuclear arsenal as the primarily guarantor of national security. President Vladimir Putin said on Friday, that it means today, we plan to further develop the nuclear triad as a guarantee of strategic deterrence and to preserve the balance of power in the world, Putin said on Friday at a meeting at the graduates from military institutions. And if you uh, go over Russian press today, you will uh, encounter this, well, Hameric laughter, really, uh, about uh, that, uh, well, the United States is ready to supply whatever it wants uh, for Ukraine, but, of course, it was re ready to talk to, you know, about the strategic, uh, you know, nuclear weapons and strategic weapon systems, uh, and it's laughter. United States is nowhere near, not even at the same league with Russia in terms of the delivery systems, and all these PR about United States creating some kind of new gravitational bomb is just PR. So, and uh, because if you read attentively, as I presented to you, the foundations of the nuclear policy of Russian Federation, you will see yourself in the definition that it is a combination of measures. It is not just technology, albeit it's primarily technology, but it is also diplomatic, economic, all, all kinds of other efforts across the board for maintaining the, uh, you know, no deterrent. And so if it, Russia, in terms of deterrent, well, as I already stated, delivery system is what really matters. And because it doesn't really matter if you hit, uh, God forbid, a city with 150,000 uh, kilo, uh, uh, 150 kilotons or, you know, 600 kilotons. The result will be about the same unless you go into the megaton uh, in what is called the uh, might of the uh, nuclear charge, or for that matter, any kind of the armor or um, warhead, not necessarily only nuclear one. It's called might. It's not just, you know, your equivalent in uh, towns of the TNT. So, and uh, that's somewhat better, you know, the higher yield of nuclear weapons. But the point is, it's all about delivery systems. And uh, Russia is developing those brand new systems. And as you can see yourself, as I already pointed out, Mr. Um, Moiseev, the uh, commander chief of Russian Navy, uh, uh, two days ago came out and stated that the a fifth generation of a strategic nuclear submarine may appear in the Russian Navy in the early 2030s, said the commander in chief and, uh, and Russian Navy Admiral uh, uh, Alexander Moiseev. He noted that now scientific and technical groundwork for this is being formed. So that means, yeah, probably by 2030, uh, Russia will be uh, d deploying absolutely completely new type of the uh, uh, nuclear powered submarines. There is a lot of speculation about this new boomer and actually not only boomer, but also the multi-purpose submarines, which carry obviously cruise missiles, like they call it Laika, which is the Husky. Um, it's a lot of speculation, but when uh, it will be state of the art, it will be some absolutely new technology. Some people say, unlike it was this with this uh, idiot who created this Titan deep diving thing for Titanic and killed number of people, him included. Actually, like us, will include uh, uh, um, composite material uh, hulls. So, and we can only. Uh, Imagine what will be the signal processing and what they will be able to see or hear, so to speak, and, you know, track in the depths of the ocean. Some people say it could be become a fully, uh, you know, um, uh, new type of the weaponry. What we know that obviously even uh, new Bulawa M modernization of the Bulova main uh, uh, sea launch ballistic missile is capable of carrying the avant-garde uh, gliding vehicles and that means what they launch at the what is called the suppressed trajectory and then avant-garde fly and yeah to Mach 27 in this uh, uh, height of about who knows between 30 to 70 kilometers good luck intercepting them United States simply has, doesn't have uh, any intercepting capabilities for it. So, but uh, then we go to a little bit of the city uh, uh, sea trap, and uh, as you can see yourself, uh, 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 losses of the armed forces of Ukraine or whatever is being used is 
Wow, it's dramatically increasing. And as you can see yourself, the slaughter is on the unimaginable scale. You have 12 tanks and APC yesterday, armored vehicles 31, artillery and mortars 41, uh, well, 180 UAVs have been intercepted. Uh, so, uh, 2,280 uh, 2, uh, military personnel of armed forces of Ukraine uh, killed and wounded. So as I already stated, multiply it by two and you will get approximately the whole number of casualties. And yeah, Mr. Belousov, the defense minister of Russian Federation, he already stated that Russia owns literally the operational uh, initiative all along the front. And of course, yeah, Russians continue to do what they're doing. They are basically killing the mobilizational potential of the uh, you know armed forces of ukraine and whatever the uh, nato allies so to speak are provided with so that is why mr putin today stated very clearly uh, is it today or yesterday there were so many statements that he stated that essentially uh, Zelensky will be removed. He says maybe the beginning next year. He is kind of you know being facetious uh, by the West itself because uh, obviously the NATO and especially United States needs to uh, some guy uh, to you know to hold the bag for them. And Zelensky is the perfect uh, candidate, and uh, Biden in a desperate attempt to win whatever so <laughs> those elections uh they will try to put everything on this guy well it's obvious that is why he's constantly high he is definitely not in normal mental state and especially after this uh, dramatic utter failure of the so-called uh Swiss peace meeting, he has nowhere to run, let me put it this way. He actually today changed some of his uh, personal uh, guards, you know, so, but again, uh, it doesn't really matter because that uh, actually, as rumor has it, he is surrounded by SAS, uh, you know, Special Air Service of Great Britain, and those guys know how to kill, you know, defenseless people and, you know, women, children, so there you go. And uh, if that hasn't been enough now, it's in the funny thing, uh, uh, which is like, my God, uh, on the 30th month, they finally noticed what had been reported from the uh, day one. American conservatives suddenly described that uh, Azov leader admits to Ukrainian use of blocking detachment. What is blocking the what the blocking detachment or barrier force is? These are people who say be uh, stay behind you and they are in relative tactical uh, safety zone and they shoot at your back if you try to retreat and so there we go and american conservatives suddenly notices this uh, and says that um well in the interview with the news channel of ukraine army army tv azov commander uh, who is by the way nazi admitted to his unit being used to prevent other ukrainian units from retreating Motivational troops appears to be a euphemism for blocking detachment, also known as barrier troops, a unit position behind the front line to prevent retreat. It appears that Azov <coughs> motivation existed as an implicit threat, preventing the territory defense, TRO, the territorial defense, soldiers from falling back. Well, yeah, that was the case from the day one, including summary executions in the front of the unit. I mean, wow, 30 months, that would it take the American conservative to recognize this. Obviously, the other mainstream media wouldn't even dare to touch this news. And the administration comes close on Biden uh, administration's decision to, uh, this admission comes close on the Biden's administration's decision to allow military aid to go to the Azov unit unit which had earlier been banned from receiving aid under the Leahy law due to its extremist association. No, they're Nazis. So yeah, but again, for Jake Sullivan and those boys from State Department, it doesn't matter. As long as they kill uh, Russians, it's fine. And just to demonstrate to you, just fresh, yesterday, here's from very reputable Izvestia, they show the video, which is the from front line. And here is the uh, the trick, so to speak, of and uh, proof of what is happening to the uh, uh, um, Ukrainian soldiers. 
Here it is, the description. They didn't abandon the guy to die. Our fighters dropped their first aid kit and water to the wounded uh, armed forces of Ukraine soldier who was uh, who his brothers tried to kill. What happened here was this. The guy tried to surrender and guess what? Those his uh, so-called barrier troops and his brothers, so to speak, they sent a UAV to kill him. He managed to uh, uh, survive this attack attack he was wounded so what russians did they supplied him with the first uh, also sent the drone supplied him with the first aid kit gave him water and of course the guy is lucky now he will get a very good medical treatment and he will be in safety in russian captivity he will be treated well and he will have good meal so generally speaking lucky one but this is your uh, you know visual proof of what is happening essentially all over the front line and this are you know uh, let me put it this way I, I understand this is what uh, those NATO instructors American you know special forces taught uh, Ukrainians you know guess what as was trained by all those CIA operative and special forces rangers and all that that's how what they taught them they didn't teach them how to fight because they don't know themselves how to fight. What they taught them is how to shoot at backs of your guys who retreat. So this is the military expertise. I think so that it should be, and it probably is, you know, uh, together with ISIS methods and things like that, uh, be taught in West Point and uh, U.S. Uh, war colleges. This is a good level of the fighting, if you wish. To, so how can I say it? I mean, yeah, it's that is why the Bloomberg laments that United States uh, lost moral you know be, as stop being moral beacon the whole world says it everybody people are not stupid in Africa or Southeast Asia they are intelligent people they know how to read they know how to put two and two together and then you can see yourself what is happening so but this if this hasn't been enough we'll have this boy Jake Solomon and uh, political reports oh my god look at this guy he was a uh, um, again he is political scientist by uh, education or rather lack thereof and he ran the Hillary's campaign so that's his uh, claim to the any kind of national security issues that means he has absolutely zero understanding of it and he says US says Ukraine can hit inside Russia anyway its forces attack across the border and this is what uh, I'm constantly talking about in terms of the selling the same PR point over and over again because evidently they think that most of the uh, 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 Western public is brainwashed and has the attention span of the guppy fish. And so they sell the same thing which my good friend Larry Johnson correctly stated. Here it is. U.S. gives Ukraine permission to do what it is already doing. Exactly. This is what it, uh, what is this all about. Uh, Ukraine was allowed quote unquote to launch at Russian territory from the get-go and from 2023 they were attacking Russian cities and villages and trying to uh, you know uh, get into a Russian territory non-stop so and then you know you have to ask the question why do they do this PR they have nothing left so of course they can can do this as they say that oh yeah Let's redirect air defense uh, orders to Ukraine, uh, uh, White House. The U.S. will prioritize deliveries, uh, deliveries of Patriot and NASA's missiles to Ukraine over any pending orders from other countries in an effort to shore up Kiev air defenses. They, uh, the White House announced on Thursday, guess what? Uh, White House so-called so National Security Communication Advisor John Kirby told reporters that Kiev is currently in desperate need of additional air defense capabilities. Well, John Kirby is not real admiral, and obviously he has absolutely zero technical background to understand that if uh, Ukraine needs something which can counteract somewhat uh, Russian uh, uh, VKS and Russian standoff weapons, they will need uh, air defense, which is very similar to uh, Russian air defense and Russian Air Force, but of course they don't have it, and so as again, PR, they will send uh, whatever they produce. Uh, rumor has it, well, rumor being quote-unquote, of course, that United States can theoretically <laughs> produce between 100 and 500 combined of those Patriot and NASA missiles a year. 
So um, let's say, let, let's go to the middle of the road. Let's go to the 300, okay? So uh, it's well, what it takes, it's about probably yeah, a couple of the attacks by geraniums, you know, those drones. And yeah, evidently people still cannot believe that uh, the uh, Patriot with the most super pooper duper missiles which the United States can possibly produce is still, a, you know, they're sitting ducks, you know. So the moment they turn on the, uh, you know, radar, it's over, you know. So and they cannot intercept anything uh, uh, supersonic, let alone hypersonic. And of course, you understand Russia producing thousands of those things, uh, uh, and I'm talking about probably many, many thousands. We're talking about. So uh, yeah, good luck intercepting them. The Russians, however, continue to develop their uh, all kinds of their. Uh, uh, defense systems and um, well let me put it this way here is the report uh, from yesterday this is by uh, TV1 Russian and it's uh, called the uh, SAMS are capable of intercepting UAVs artillery and the rockets and they are talking about the new modification of the Panzer what I believe it's um, uh, 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 abbreviation is Panzer SMSV, whatever that means, but uh, obviously it's a very advanced capabilities for Panzer. And look at this, the Panzer anti-aircraft missile gun system, the RPK, has already shot down American attack and operational tactical ballistic missiles in the combat zone. For this type of weapon, new anti-aircraft guided missiles, SAMs, have been produced, which will ensure the interception of dozens of air attack weapons, at Russian Arms Telegram channel reported. So and uh, they show the new types of the missiles which they are produced in uh, uh, by people to arm those uh, uh, panzer systems and uh, they talk about three types of the missiles for example short range 57e6 missile the maximum speed of the missile is 13 uh, meters per second it's about uh, Mach 4 the average trajectory speed about is about 900 meters per second the range is 20 kilometers the maximum height of the target uh, uh, hit is 15 kilometers it's capable of inter intercepting targets with overload of up to 15 units well 15 G's uh, you have to understand for example that attackums is not really you know that maneuverable it's pretty much standard ballistic missile but yeah there is another missile in this case it followed by the two-stage medium range sam interceptor 57e6m with a high impulse solid propellant rocket engine of the upper stage the maximum speed is up to 17 uh, uh, 100 meters per second it's mach 6 uh, uh, yeah, it's about Mach 5.6, something like that. So, and uh, the medium trajectory speed is up to 1100 meters uh, per second, and the range is up to 40 kilometers. So, and uh, the third SAM is the, uh, you know, the other type of the SAMs, which uh, is kind of, you know, utility single uh, stage uh, anti aircraft interceptor missile. So, and um, it, they also uh, can uh, shoot things down on the very low trajectory and when you look at this and yeah this is that thing then you have the tor m2 which proved itself absolutely uh, provided an astonishing combat record then you look at other uh, uh, systems and that's what is happening which united states is not not even in the same league and you may ask oh well, okay north korea has s300 yeah it does it's the older ones and they have this sort of knockoffs um will russia provide it with s400 or you can bet your you know behind on that i'm pretty sure uh and that changes the whole dynamics as i already stated for example for south korea and also for japan and so we can sit and talk here about all those political things you know and how russia just by single move uh changed the whole uh situation around you know in southeast asia shifting the balance of power there and of course now uh you know a few days ago they concluded egypt and and uh, Russian Navy, Pacific Fleet, no less, uh, uh, joint maneuvers. And there is obviously now uh, uh, agreement between uh, Haftar and uh, Russians to use Tabruk as the, you know, basically point, naval point, almost naval base there in Libya, which also will uh, play a huge role in supplying, for example, Russian contingent of the what, you know, what's called Africa Corps. 
<laughs> yeah, it has nothing to do with Rommel, believe me. <laughs> this, but this is what it is. Mr. Suraviking runs the whole Russian Africa uh, uh, operation and runs it very effectively. French cannot still, you know, come around and face the reality. They already have been kicked out. They will be kicked out next time they try even more severely. So, well, they better think. That's why actually Macron goes, you know, bananas all the time. He cannot, I mean, and we discussed it yesterday and uh, I believe it was uh, Tucker Carlson with Grant Grunwald uh, discussing the situation about, for example, British media, why they are so vicious, why they are so dehumanizing and, well, basically scam of the earth. They are. The people who work there are scam of the earth. Uh, because very simple, they, as Glenn and Tucker discussed it, that uh, basically they cannot live with this reality that uh, nobody is. United Kingdom is nobody. It's not great empire anymore. It's a pipsqueak, economic and military. It's pathetic, actually, and it is also in the state of the you know indigenous uh, English and you know Anglo-Saxon uh, population being replaced. So yeah, what can I say? Uh, that's why they are vicious, and we have the same circle now in uh, or vicious circle uh, happening in the United States because suddenly they begin to recognize they do not really matter that much. And it, the uh, influence of the United States will continue to decline. It is, you know, it is for the best for the rest of the world. And, but that brings us to the other question, which I will need to discuss at some point of time. Why? What can the United States do to save yourself? And uh, it's also part of it. Many people say that the United States is completely incapable of paying off its uh, their, uh, national debt, which I agree. They don't. So what's going to happen next? What can I say? Read some of Dmitry Arlov's books for starters. And this is what I wanted to tell you guys today. And as always, this is kind of something for you to have your brains occupied for a uh, weekend. And as always, those who like what I do, please subscribe to my channel. And those who can afford, please support me on Patreon or buy me a coffee and too. And have a nice weekend and I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye-bye.